Today, the missiles are out and the Payton family is in. My name is Edward Payton, and I live in a decommissioned missile base. Ed purchases 37 acres housing the former Atlas E missile base in 1982 for $40,000. Over the next 12 years, he converts one third of the washed up silo into 6,000 square feet of luxury living space for his family. Wow, looks like you could cook for an army in here. <laughs> yeah, hey, that's a good one, Moran. This is a launch control panel. America in the 1950s. It's all about Ozzie and Harriet families, prosperity, and the looming fear of nuclear war. Across the country, schools are issuing dog tags to kids for ID purposes, and newspapers include radiation readings alongside weather reports. The U.S. government builds an arsenal of nuclear weapons, including Atlas E and F missiles. By the 1960s, the missiles are obsolete, so Uncle Sam removes them, leaving the vast labyrinth of underground tunnels that once housed the nukes vacant. This is the room where the missile was kept. I mean, an actual missile was right in here? There was an Atlas missile here Every for home four years. right? Yes. <laughs> so how'd you get this, how, not you, obviously, but how did they <laughs> get this big missile out of here and prepare it for launch? Well, the, this large door, 47-ton door, would open, and they could back a large semi-truck in here with the missile, and then the missile that was lying horizontal here would be drawn upward, erected, and then it would be fueled, ready for launch. Atlas E missiles are over seven stories tall and carry a nuclear warhead 10 times more powerful than the atomic bombs dropped on Japan. What sort of facility was it? Was it Air Force or Army? This, this was an Air Force facility. And it was active from 1961 to 1965. So that was a pretty heated time, right? <laughs> yes. Cuban Missile Crisis going on? Exactly. This was active during the Cuban Missile Crisis. So do you know which city the missile that was kept here was aimed at? They never discuss targeting. It's not a popular topic. What the government is not quiet about is how much money they poured into building these underground silos. How much did it actually cost us, the taxpayers, to build this thing? Uh, the taxpayers spent $25 million here. On this one facility? On this one facility. And $25 million in 1960 dollars is a little different than we think How about How much did you today. pick it up for? Uh, I bought the thing for forty thousand. <laughs> <laughs> now we must we must understand that. Now that's buying at the right that's time. It. Yes. <laughs> the average two-car garage in America is approximately four hundred square feet. Ed's garage is nearly three thousand. He's operating on a bit of a grander scale than most, and that got us curious about the rest of his house. So, how far underground are we here? Well, there's probably 10 or 15 feet of earth over us here. So we're really in the ground. <laughs> How homey. Oh, yeah, we try to make it homey. Uh, this was the launch control room. Now, this is nice. Really? It's now our living room. Uh, we're still underground here? Oh, yes, we're underground. Oh, with the, the, the stained glass window there. Well, everything. we pretend to have yes. windows. Oh. <laughs> now, so this was a very serious room. There were three Air Force personnel in this room around the clock, 24-7, for the four years that the site was, was active. And these people were prepared and capable of launching that rocket uh, to go halfway around the Earth and kill a million people. So th the energy of this room is pretty serious. Mm -hmm. Converted silos are not turnkey homes. A lot of work was into making the space livable. The place doesn't smell musty, though. How do you keep it so fresh and well, clean? Well, down here, we are managing the air. We have a large dehumidification system that air conditions and filters the air and does a very nice job of air quality down here. Was there any contaminants left over from the, from the old base? There, there are some chemicals that are in groundwater around the property. Mm -hmm. The U.S. government's taking complete responsibility for that and doing some remediation. And so, so we're, this place is still costing them money then? It's still costing them <laughs> money. Was there anything you found out about this place when you got here that you just weren't expecting, you weren't quite prepared for? Well, yes, there was a time when I lived a bit more normally. And the, the issue of coming into this concrete structure, this was meant to be untouched even by nuclear war, presents certain challenges. 
So I guess you don't really take the garbage out, you take the garbage up, right? <laughs> we take the garbage up, we mow the roof. Yes. Mow the roof. <laughs> Challenges or not, Ed loves it here. And he believes in silo living so much that in 1995, he starts selling them. We do have about 10 or 12 properties that are available on our website, uh, missilebases.com. I can put you in this tunnel today. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Low down payment. We can make it happen. <laughs> this is my favorite room. Now, this is nice. This wow. is beautiful. It's, a, it's big. Oh, we like this space, yeah. Very Boy, you'd never know you were in a missile base. So what was this room we were standing in here originally? This was the diesel generator room, the power room. Shockingly, in the 1960s, these silos run off of commercial power, but the government installs diesel generators in case the public supply is interrupted. Today, Ed and family call it the temple room. How did you come to envision that uh, this is uh, the place where you wanted to build a home? Well, that evolved slowly. I was teaching history and uh, current events at Topeka West High School. It is a weapon our This was in 1980s. President Reagan was at the helm, and he was talking about the evil empire, and it seemed that nuclear exchange might actually happen. And so I heard local people talking about the missile base, so I thought I should come and see. Sure, this place is a survivalist dream. But for Ed, a self-declared peacenik, the draw is that it's easier on his pocket. Our electric bills run from just under $200, maybe to $350 in the, in the expensive months, and that's it. I guess you don't have to worry about air conditioning, right? It's pretty cool down here. It is cool. We air condition a bit. On the other hand, these houses are underground and get little natural light. But how many homes can honestly say that they can hold up against Mother Nature and a nuclear attack? This was rated to withstand a single megaton airburst about a mile from the structure. And I guess a tornado could pass right overhead while you were sleeping and you wouldn't even wake up. We don't feel very worried about tornadoes. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for the tour and thanks for bringing us above ground again. Well, <laughs> it's been fun. Thank you. It's been fun. And, and continue on with your work with the weirdness. <laughs> we always will.